Hello and welcome to the Astranti Financial Training Real World Industry Analysis for the May 2017 Management Case Study Exam featuring BES. The purpose of this video and this pack is to give you the real world industry context for the case company that we're going to study. Why do we do this? Well, look, I'll show you. When we look at the examiner's report from 2015, what the examiner said was they had hoped that the candidates would be able to use industry knowledge and knowledge of the company to formulate their answers, but there was little evidence uh, that they'd been able to do this. So what we're trying to help you do is demonstrate industry knowledge within the exam uh, because you are told in the pre-scene that you are a financial manager employed by BES, okay? So you've got to uh, provide logical business advice as if you were an employee working in this industry. And if you were working in that industry, you would know the industry inside out, okay? So we're trying to give you the kind of background knowledge that you can uh, take to the bank on exam day and really help you impress the examiner. I'm particularly pleased to get um, a pre-scene on uh, retail because retail is my uh, specialist chosen area. I spent most of my uh, career uh, dealing with retail and retailers uh, and so this is of particular interest um, and uh, is a particular area of knowledge for me. Now I'm not going to go through the entire history of dollar stores. Um, I'm going to just quickly start here uh, with the story of Woolworths, the original dollar store, if you like. These were the um, dime stores, in fact, back in the day because they were only selling things for 10 cents, okay? The key point here is the concept is well over 100 years old, okay? So it may seem that pound shops, dollar stores and so forth is relatively new. It's grown up since the recession, but that's only the most recent flourishing or the most recent blooming of the concept. It has happened before back in the day. And what is interesting about the fact that we have this history is that, okay, you start off selling things at five and 10 cents, okay? And then over time, what happened to these nickel and dime stores, to give them their colloquial names, is that um, inflation uh, happened to them. <laughs> and so nickel and dime stores became dollar stores. And given that we've got this historical model of inflation uh, with nickel and dime stores turning into dollar stores, it kind of follows that today's dollar stores are tomorrow's two dollar stores or five dollar stores or ten dollar stores. OK, so where you've got a situation where a retailer is selling at a fixed price point, they are going to run into trouble as their input costs uh, and their fixed costs rise. Um, that's going to place pressure on the margins until it becomes non-viable to sell at that price point. OK, so um, that's just the inflation. I want to have a look here at some of these historical companies. These are some of the imitators um, of Woolworths. One here, uh, uh, Kreska uh, Co. Um, is interesting and as is Walton's Five and Dime. Uh, these stores became Kmart and Walmart. All the others closed down, including Woolworths, by the way. OK, so that's the history. And as the saying goes, those who um, don't remember history are condemned to repeat it. So I think the lesson here from history is that um, the single price model is uh, actually a bit of a mugs game. Today in variety retail, we have a host of former single price retailers that now uh, do things differently. Um, Hema, for example, um, a Dutch company that's actually uh, right, right across Europe, uh, started off as a single price uh, retailer, now is a multi-price. Uh, Prise Unique um, in France, uh, which means single price, uh, is no longer a single price. Uh, Monoprix in France uh, also means um, single price and again um, isn't. Uh, actually Monoprix is quite an upscale store these days. So they've 
moved up market, abandoned single prices long ago, abandoned value, abandoned the bottom of the market, and they've pursued affluent consumers, as have uh, HEMA. So why am I telling you all of this? BES is a single price retailer. It's not the first, all right? So history shows us through the rise and fall of Woolworths and its imitators that the single price model has a finite lifetime and that lifetime is not dictated by management it's dictated by external factors uh, like the economy all right so how long has BES got okay this is basically a pastel question so why are we seeing the dollar store format flourishing again of course it's perfect uh, for recession since 2007 2008 um, Europe and the US uh, has gone through a significant financial crisis followed by a long uh, recession. Okay. So I've drawn an analogy here with uh, plankton in the sea. They bloom under certain conditions, under certain economic conditions. Okay, when things are not going so well for consumers, then we see a rise in the number of pound shops. Um, and then when things get better for consumers, the number of pound shops declines. I mean, you're always going to see a few, uh, but really uh, they flourish uh, in uh, depressed economies. So if recent economic factors have driven a massive period of growth, it follows that uh, an improvement uh, in conditions is going to be a threat. When it comes to products, really the key word here is wide range. The idea is that you go in for your cheap bleach, but you leave with six other things. Okay, that's how they make their money. They tempt you in uh, with one thing and you leave with many other multiple impulse purchases in your basket. Okay, because everything is so cheap. In the UK, we have seen uh, an increasing trend towards more and more food in pound shops, which is interesting as we are starting to see the, uh, the, the pound shops or dollar stores or single price stores, whichever term you prefer, uh, start to compete with supermarkets um, for um, actual fresh produce. Now, if we take the UK as a model and have a look at some data, um, we've seen over the last five years a 51% net rise uh, in the number of these single price stores. Um, I use the term pound shops sometimes. You could just as well call them dollar stores or dime stores uh, or single price retailers. It's all the same thing, okay? So what's been driving uh, this um, near saturation uh, in the UK is partly the economy, uh, uh, but also a move towards more frequent and more local shopping. So people have been doing fewer large weekly shops, and that's a trend that's been spreading across Europe um, uh, for you know almost 10 years now. We've been seeing it gradually moving that way. Here's an interesting fact. In the UK, Woolworths started in the UK as a single price retailer. It abandoned the single price model and traded uh, successfully for many, many years, becoming um, an integral part of high streets as a multi-price point variety retailer. Now, when the recession hit, Woolworths died a death. It failed to provide a value proposition. In other words, it found itself selling a variety of goods for rather high prices. Um, it was neither a premium location nor was it a value location. It was kind of stuck in the middle and it didn't adapt to changing conditions and collapsed. And it collapsed right at this point where crisis hit, recession followed, and what happened was the pound stores picked up all the former Woolworths locations in a kind of final twist of irony. Where you get high growth, uh, you eventually get to consolidation. Okay, so we've seen uh, some consolidation in the market and we're seeing some slowing down. So back in 2010, just in the wake of the crisis, according to Kantar, pound stores were sort of doing about 40% year on year uh, without even trying, um, says Kantar. Uh, that's really not the case now. We're looking at uh, annual growth of about 2.5%, which is... Um, 
heading into mature industry territory and edging towards that final part of the life cycle, which is, you guessed it, decline. So have we hit a peak dime store? Uh, the quick answer is yes. There's some evidence now that the pound store sector is over-retailed, uh, here in the UK at least. Uh, in my town where I live, I had two branches of Poundland. They've just closed one. They couldn't sustain two. Now, it does show that you know in the years leading up to uh, 2017, two uh, stores could be sustained in uh, a normal town. But obviously that does not carry on being the case as the economy improves and people feel they've got more money in their pockets. So when we apply this to our pre-scene, well, what I'm saying is the real world industry uh, that BES is part of is currently at the maturity stage of its current incarnation. We're seeing the consolidation and we're seeing um, some contraction in the footprint that it's taking up. Some, so there's a hint at decline. All right. Now, whether BES is going to experience a lengthy plateau or a gradual decline really depends on what happens with the country economy over the next few years. If wages rise in country E, then BES is going to have to push further into country X. Now, just before I go, let me remind you that this is not the end of it. We do offer a full range of support materials, including the study text and other course videos. Uh, we do the industry analysis where we look at the real world industry that your case study is based on. We do mock exams around the case study exam and we offer marking feedback and masterclasses, all of which are covered by the Estranti Pass Guarantee. So I'll see you in the next video.